Hi, thanks for joining me here today. My name is Olivia. If you've not been here before, I do content largely centered on health topics, paganism, and conscious aging. Um, today we are talking about witches, pumpkins, and apples. Thanks for being here. I remember hearing some time ago a prophecy by a woman named Mary Summer Rain, who is a blind indigenous American. And she said that we would be facing major climate disruptions. And as she described it, summer, winter, all mix up. And I kind of think we've been living that um, for as long as I remember, we have had really kind of short autumns in Colorado. Maybe I just don't remember right, because I do remember the year my son was born. And he was born in October, and we had a beautiful autumn that year. But it seems to me that more often we have sort of an abrupt short season. And then we start getting like snowy rain at the end of September, etc. It's been crazy this year, so beautiful and warm. Um, we had a few fall like days much earlier, but more recently it's just been crazy warm. As you can see, yesterday it was absolutely glorious. It was like 74 degrees. And I did some winterizing. I finished all the pulling all the vines, the pumpkin vines, and harvested my last baby pumpkin because it's going to freeze this weekend. So I thought I would just go ahead and say, say goodbye to the pumpkin garden for this year. And I pulled up the fencing and, um, moved some of the soil around and then I'll make some decisions about what I'm going to do with my plants and uh, just prepare. I pulled some in closer because it got down to like 44 degrees last night, which is pretty cold, I think, for tomatoes. So that's where we are. The season is finally really, I think, turning. And uh, what a difference a day can make. We woke up this morning to this. Look at this. My son, as he was preparing for school, said, Mom, I'm going to get Lovecrafted. And I said, do you want an Uber? And he was like, oh, hell no. I'm going to walk in this shit. So, <laughs> yeah. And the camera doesn't even quite pick up how misty it is. And you have to understand, this is Colorado. It's a very dry region. We don't get a lot of mist and fog. So when we do, it feels very mysterious and, and kind of exciting and thrilling. Yeah. So I think we're finally turning. I think we're finally at Samhain. Samhain. Summer's end. And I'm sure we'll still have some more beautiful days. And I'll appreciate them. But truly, the fog is rolling in. The pumpkins have been harvested. And soon we will sit down together. Witches and, and pumpkins and apples. Oh my. Witches. These are common symbols associated with Shawin, Summer's End or as we know it, Halloween. So I thought we could talk uh, again uh, about a little bit about each of them. Uh, if you watched my video on Maybon, we did discuss witches. So you might want to check that one out. But I'm going to read a bit to you about witches and witchcraft from Wikipedia. 
Witchcraft, as most commonly understood in both historical and present-day communities, is the use of alleged supernatural powers of magic. A witch is a practitioner of witchcraft. Traditionally, witchcraft means the use of magic or supernatural powers to inflict harm or misfortune on others, and this remains the most common and widespread meaning. The belief in witchcraft has been found in a great number of societies worldwide. Anthropologists have applied the English term, quote, witchcraft to similar beliefs in occult practices in many different cultures and societies that have adopted the English language have often internalized the term. Although I would add that those societies don't have the same perception for them, that is just their indigenous um, ritual magic um, and they wouldn't even think of it as magic it's just their cosmology back to Wikipedia in Europe belief in witchcraft traces back to an classical antiquity in medieval and early modern Europe accused witches were usually women who were believed to have used black magic or malficium against their own community Usually, accusations of witchcraft were made by their neighbors and followed from social tensions. Witches were sometimes said to have communed with evil beings, though British anthropologist Jean Lafontaine notes that, quote, stereotype of evil appears not to have been closely connected to the actions of real people, except when it was mobilized against the current enemies of the church, end quote. Excuse me. It was thought witchcraft could be thwarted by protective magic or counter magic, which could be provided by the, quote, cunning folk or wise people. Suspected witches were also intimidated, banished, attacked, or killed. Often, they would be formally prosecuted and punished. If found guilty or believed to be guilty... European witch hunts and witch trials in the early modern period led to tens of thousands of executions. While magical healers and midwives were sometimes accused of witchcraft themselves, they made up a minority of those accused. This is according to Wikipedia. I would challenge that. I would say that they were probably very often those accused. Back to Wikipedia, European belief in witchcraft gradually dwindled during and after the Age of Enlightenment. Mm. This is true, although I think that uh, there were some witch burnings in India as of maybe two years ago. So, yeah, some things um, happily persist. Some superstitions happily persist. Um... There has been a modern resurgence in pagan ritual practices, um, and this is addressed um, in a wonderful book by Margot Adler called Drawing Down the Moon. I would recommend anybody read it. It's a wonderful book. I read it years ago, um, and there are several books by a woman pagan priestess named Starhawk, um, that deal with neo-paganism and how very often for neo-pagans um, their beliefs are intertwined with their political praxis in particular in favor of protecting Gaia, the earth, our mother, um, through ecological legislation, etc. So which is, as part of Shawin, is kind of fascinating because I, my own inkling is that um, our fear and dread of mortality is sort of exposed at the dark part of the year. We fear the dark, what comes out of the dark. There are archetypes of crones and the ancient um, mothers who... Uh, assisted during birth and also during death, and just the proximity to death that elders evoke in us. Uh, so there's sort of an archetypal, visceral fear that we have of 
of the the elder, the aged, the frail, and that is evoked during Shawin. Next, we will talk about pumpkins. So, I said that we were going to talk about pumpkins, and uh, I wrote a few notes so that I could uh, remember what I wanted to say about them. Pumpkins, gourds, squash, and other root vegetables are hardy and nutritious autumn and winter yielding foods able to last the winter months in cool root cellars. Thus, they symbolize the earth's abundance and our ability to survive the harsh winter. The seeds too are nutritious, have medicinal qualities, and may be reused the following spring or summer to plant a new crop. Food, as we talked about often on this channel, is the central mystery of life. It's what sustains us, and we ourselves are food. I have read somewhere a jack-o'-lantern or a lantern or candle, but especially a jack-o'-lantern on Halloween, uh, in every window sill on the night of Hallow's Eve is a ward to evil spirits. So I take no chances and I try to put a pumpkin or, or a jack-o'-lantern or at least a candle. It doesn't even have to be a real jack-o'-lantern like a carp gourd or pumpkin, but a fake one. I don't care. I'm a little bit superstitious, so I, I do it. I take no chances. And I ha try to have all my windows lit with some kind of a light or lantern on, on Halloween. And um, I also wanted to mention uh, Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Um, instead of jack-o'-lanterns for the dear departed ancestors, the way back to their loved ones is lit by candles and the beautiful bright colors of marigolds. Apples, like pumpkins and gourds, are an abundant late summer fruit uh, that can be stored um, in the root cellar. They can also be uh, made into applesauce or canned, preserved in many ways, baked in pies, etc. So they're another symbol of harvest and abundance and, and nutrition. They also have the mystical element of um, being associated with youthfulness um, and knowledge. Uh, across mythologies from the Norse to the Babylonian um, and of course in Christian mythos we know the apple um, is the grantor of knowledge or it has been associated that way I'm not sure it's actually proven that it was an apple in the Garden of Eden but I think that's sort of the consensus around what was offered to Eve by the serpent and if you cut an apple in half not um, lengthwise but horizontally you'll see um, like a like a, a star shape that's like a human con that represents human consciousness the five pointed star so apples yes have long been associated with um, wisdom temptation sexuality youth all things good and bad and so um, candied apples, dunking for apples, these things we see often at Halloween. And we celebrate with all kinds of candies and goodies that are also sort of representative of uh, storage carbohydrates for humans to endure the winter. So thanks for listening. I am so grateful to all of you for being here and enjoying the symbols of Shawin Halloween with me. And I really hope you have the most blessed Shawin. May all your dreams, hopes, and wishes for the year to come begin 
to be seated in this dark part of the year. May you embrace the rich, dark, fessant night as we enter together. And I will see more of you soon. And I hope that you will share with me how you celebrate Shaolin Halloween. And it, tell me if you're excited about it. I love it. I can't wait. Hail and blessed be.